So glad that you guys could all be here for the most dramatic gospel reading that we have for the entire year. I don't know about you, but I didn't know that Shitiel was the father of Zerubbabel. <laughs> Go tell everybody you know. This is amazing. I don't know if you've ever been punished before, you children. I was always getting into trouble when I was younger. And uh, I, so I got different punishments, but there's one punishment that I've never forgotten. It stayed with me. It was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I was acting up at the table. It was five o'clock. It was dinner time. And so my father said I had to go to my room for the rest of the night. That's four hours by yourself in your room with nothing to do. I, I, like, I encountered the most extreme existential questions of life in that time. Like, who am I? And what does it all mean? Looking back, I realized that being sent to my room was the worst punishment that I ever received. So I found it really interesting that even studies have shown that even when we become an adult, the worst punishment we could ever receive is solitary confinement, to be sent to a room all by ourselves. You know, psychologists have done studies on inmates. They said there's absolutely nothing that's more trying to the human mind, a greater suffering on the human person than solitary confinement, nothing. To be alone. So kids, next time your parents send you to your room, make sure to tell them this is cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> but of course, this analogy made me think of one of the most classic Christmas movies of all time. Home Alone. The existential drama that Kevin has to go through in that film is very similar to the salvation history, the drama of salvation history and the nativity of Christ. Kevin is angry with his family because he feels oppressed. So one time, he begins jumping up and down at the top of the steps saying, when I grow up, I'm living alone. I'm living alone. I'm living alone. And then his mother comes up to talk to him and confront him. And she says, you know, maybe you should ask Santa for a new family. And he says, I don't want any new family. Family stink. When I grow up, I'm living alone. And she responds, I hope you don't mean that. You'd feel pretty sad if you woke up tomorrow morning and you didn't have a family. And he looks back at her defiantly, and he says, no, I wouldn't. I hope I ne never see any of you ever again. And he walks up the steps saying to himself, I wish they'd all just disappear. And we know what happens after that, right? His parents go off to France without him. They forget him. And he gets a chance to see what life would be like without family. He gets a chance to be home alone. And what's the first thing that Kevin does? Well, he starts jumping on his bed, eating popcorn, running all around the house, eating ice cream for breakfast, and watching inappropriate films, breaking into Buzz's bedroom, taking his BB gun, breaking open his chest, sledding in the house. Life becomes a party for him because his family is gone. He escapes the tyrannical oppression a family, now he's free to do whatever he wants so he can finally be happy. But little by little, Kevin begins to realize how empty and sad and meaningless life can be when you're home alone, even if you can do whatever you want. And he sees that the world is dangerous and when you're home alone, bad people can try to break into your house. And it's in those realizations that at one point in the film, he looks up and he cries out, Mother, where are you? He sees how much he needs his family. Well, this is what happened when we as human beings sinned and do sin against God. 
We interpret God's presence in our life as oppressive, as tyrannical, as a limitation on our freedom. So we said to Him, I don't want a God. God stink. I don't want to see Him for the rest of my life. And that's when God said to us, I hope you don't mean that. You'd feel pretty sad if you woke up in the morning and you didn't have a God. But we just replied to Him with that same defiance of Kevin, no we won't. And we walked away from Him in our time saying, I wish God would just disappear. And so it is in our world, in our times today. It seems as if we have made God disappear from our life. He no longer has a place in our day-to-day, in our morality, in our homes, in our schools, on our Sundays. And now we can say we are free. Free to do whatever we want. Free to go wherever we want. Free to believe whatever we want. Love whoever we want, whenever we want. We're free. Because we've made God disappear. But little by little, just like Kevin, reality sinks in for all of us. And we realize that life cannot be a prolonged party, jumping on the bed, sledding in the house. We realize how empty and sad and meaningless it is to be home alone. That there is a deep longing in the depths of my being that I cannot fill with all the movies I want or the ice cream that I eat. And we also come to see another fact, that the world is a dangerous place And when you do not have God living in your house, bad people can try to get in, like the wet bandits. And as soon as we realize that, we look up and we feel from the depths of our hearts a cry that we had forgotten. We say, God, where are you? What Kevin didn't realize was that throughout the entire movie, his mother was fighting to get back to him. And so too, so often we do not realize that all of our lives, God has been fighting to break into our solitary confinement where we have placed ourselves when we turned away from him. That's why God became flesh and was born into the world this very night to save us by once again being with us. In today's Gospel, the angel says to Joseph, Mary will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus Christ because he will save their people from their sins. And how does Jesus Christ save us from our sins? Well, you have to know what sin does first. Sin is separation. And we've all experienced this. It's a triple alienation. When we sin, we feel separated from ourselves. There's a division that comes up within me. I feel separated from those closest to me, especially those who I've hurt. And I feel separated from God. So Jesus saves us from our self-induced isolation with the one means that we need to be saved by being with us, by coming back to us and filling our home with His presence once again. By coming back so that we're no longer alone. That's why the angel said, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's how God saves us, by once again being God with us. Emmanuel. So that never again in our life 
would we have to feel like we were home alone? Because to be alone is the worst thing that could ever happen to us in life. As kids, to be sent to our rooms. As adults, to be sent to solitary confinement. And as souls, to be shut out from heaven. But for those who recognize Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, born of the Virgin Mary 2,000 years ago in a cave, and for those who recognize Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, born on this altar tonight, they will never again have to be alone, neither in this world nor in eternity because they will be filled with the vision of Emmanuel, God with us. That's what the nativity of Christ is all about.